Ale... Please. We are about to begin with the opening ceremony. President uh, William Ruto, the President of the Republic of Kenya, I'd like to just invite you to this uh, Africa's Green Momentum session and I'll make very few opening remarks uh, so that we can get straight to business. Uh, Your Excellencies, distinguished leaders, esteemed colleagues and honored guests, on behalf of President William Ruto, it is my privilege to welcome you to today's discussion. It is truly a pleasure to convene so many partners and allies who believe in Africa's green momentum and who share the conviction that our continent's vast resources hold the key to a prosperous, inclusive future, not only for Africa, but for the world. Together, we are unlocking the potential to usher in a new era of green industrialization one that leverages Africa's abundant renewal, renewable energy resources to stimulate economic growth, build resilient infrastructure, and uplift communities across the continent. Africa's vision, enshrined in the Nairobi Declaration, is a commitment to a climate-positive growth, and we are translating this vision into practical, transformative action. With partnerships like the Africa Green Industrialization Initiative, AGII, and the Accelerated Partnership for Renewals in Africa, APRA, launched at COP28, we have the tools, the ambition, and alignment needed to transform Africa's resources into engines of innovation and prosperity. And we are already making strides. Just a few weeks ago, Kenya hosted an investment forum with IRENA and our APRA partners, resulting in a pipeline of projects worth 2.6 billion US dollars across APRA countries. These projects align seamlessly with the AGII industrial strategy, which captures the pressing need to expand and strengthen global value chains. And possibilities are immense. Clean energy alone added to 320 billion USD to the global economy in 2023, accounting for 10% of global GDP growth. But Africa is yet to reap these benefits. The world is setting new records in renewable energy deployment, leaving Africa behind. Our continent accounted for just 0.5% last year. So if we are to translate our ambition commitment and vision to impact on the ground, we must look for innovative solutions that can help drive new capital into green industries, create jobs for our youth, and strengthen Africa's infrastructure for the next level of growth. Through APRA and AGII, we are redefining collaboration in ways that transcend borders and sectors bringing together governments, the private sector, and international partners in a unified mission. I look forward to hearing your insights and ideas and commitments as we work together to chart a clear path for the year ahead. I thank you. As Kenya, um, we are looking forward to graduating from pledges 
and commitments to actual disbursement of the resources. Uh, when we were, when, uh, we were in Nairobi, the president chaired a session uh, and we were able to get the Nairobi declaration with, co with the direction and the agenda for the African continent. Now, these countries now need actual support and therefore the re-engineering, what we need to get out of here is the re-engineered financial products which are concessionary in nature which do not have too many complications for disbursement so that the countries can start their action plans on environmental uh, actions to save their countries. Uh, we do not want, for instance, uh, because we are already reeling with a lot of public debt uh, through expensive funding. So if we can re-engineer this to have it concessional, and when I say concessional, that means borrowing at even 1% or less, okay, and having a longer period uh, of repayment, maybe even 30 to 40 years, so that countries can actually push the climate action agenda without devastating the overall fabric in their countries. So this is going to be very, very important and we hope that out of this COP uh, we will perhaps at the next session be able to see out of the commitments that were made, let us see what were the actual disbursements to support climate related action in all these countries and even have a tabulation where we can see that out of those commitments so much went to Africa, so much went to Africa in the following order and to support certain programs so that we move away from a generalized uh, approach to commitments. So it is important uh, for, for each country and Kenya for instance to focus on programs whether bilateral or multilateral that are properly tailored to deal with the Kenyan challenge. That is one thing. So bilaterals do not mean that you negate a continental approach. It's just that you focus appropriately to make sure it dovetails. Agenda yetu kubwa ni kuhakikisha kwamba haya mataifa ambayo yamekuwa yakisema kwamba tuko tayari ama tumetoa kiasi fulani uh, cha usaidizi tunataka sasa tutoke kwa hiyo hali ya kuzumuza tu tunataka tuone kabisa kwamba hizi pesa ama huu usaidizi sasa umefikaje kwa hizo mataifa kama Kenya na zengine na tunataka tuone ni program gani ambayo imepewa ni taifa gani limepewa kiasi gani ili tuepukane na yale ambayo tumekuwa tukiona kwamba kila cop mtu anazungumza kusema kwamba tumetoa kiasi fulani lakini pesa hazijafika kwa zile mataifa tunataka tuone kwa mfano mashirika kama yale ya benki ya dunia world bank ama benki kama african development bank ila ambayo ni ya uh, mataifa ya kiafrika tunataka tuone sasa huo usaidizi ukienda pale ili mataifa zetu zianze kupata usaidizi kwa riba ambayo ni ya chini zaidi kwa sababu uchumi wetu kwa sasa kwa kijumla katika bara la Afrika una uh, changamoto nyingi kwa hivyo tunataka huu usaidizi uje kwa riba ambayo haitatuumiza ndio sasa tuanze kutekeleza uh, ajenda yetu katika mambo ya climate Kenya has an agenda but uh, we are here in COP29 not as Kenya. We are here as Africa because the chair of Africa Heads of State and Government on Climate Change is President William Ruto. And the chair of the Africa negotiating team is also a Kenyan. So I'm speaking for Africa. And we have an agenda here. And we have a plan. Because we met as ministers in Abuja, Ivory Coast, about two months ago. We came with what are our irreducible minimum for this COP. Our heads of state in New York at the silence of UNGA ratified. 
So COP29 uh, in quotes is a finance COP. So we must get right the financing issues around climate change. The reusable minimum is that uh, on financing, uh, there was an agreement in Copenhagen of $100 billion that was never achieved, that there was no tracking system, that there was no mechanism to track it. Now we are bringing in as Africa a new financing mechanism of 1.3 trillion because uh, the global south and most of Africa we are the victims uh, and the polluters are here so we want the polluters to pay for the victims so we are coming with a new financing mechanism of 1.3 trillion by 2030 that's one of our key agenda and in all this financing it must not be commercial loan or commercial financing. It should be grants. And why do I say Kenya itself as a country is a victim of climate change in the last four or five years. From drought where 5% of our GDP was consumed, 2.5 million uh, livestock was lost in the Asal region. Then we had the floods that uh, killed many of our people. In Nairobi alone, I think 42 people died. But across the country, over 400. So we are, we, are, we, are, we are coming here as really victims of climate change. And climate change is, 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 is real. And uh, the choice for Kenya today, as I stand here, is between three things. Uh, climate uh, change from drought to floods to landslide how do we deal with it that destroy our infrastructure that affects our budget uh, circle to debts the burden of debts and and, and, and I think the, uh, the, the the other key thing is the choice you have to make is developing our country sustainable development so on one side, we have uh, the effects of climate change uh, ha having heavy burden on our economy. We have the debt burden, and then we have sustainable development. Our people want development. 